Well, right now I'm feeling very fortunate because I have the opportunity to serve as senior director of Justice for Vets, and Justice for Vets is having such a profound and real and deep impact on the lives of our veterans and their families. Signature injury of the Iraq and Afghanistan war is post-traumatic stress disorder and TBI, traumatic brain injury. Yeah. There has been 2.6 million veterans in the Iraq and Afghanistan war. One in five suffer from PTSD or TBI. That's over half a million Americans yeah. coming back from war. Do you think for those who fall through the cracks, is veteran court a good avenue for them to go through? Phenomenal. I think if, you know, veterans returning home with as you said, the signature signature wounds of, of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars um, with PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and compounded by substance abuse because there's definitely a correlation there. And then they find themselves interacting with criminal justice. They may not even realize that what they need is treatment and not be in a place to get it. And arrest is a point of intervention, and it's a critical point of intervention. And going through the court, through the Veterans Treatment Court, is that Point that is life-saving and I have heard time and time again from veterans who've gone through veterans treatment courts the best thing that happened to me was that I got arrested because it gave me the opportunity to get the help that I needed and the, and frankly the help that they've earned and the help they deserve and watching these courts work and watching the men go th men and women go through them is such a gift and I am excited because we are at a critical moment, as you said. We are at a critical moment in our nation's history, and we have to decide how are we going to treat our veterans who are struggling on the home front. And we use words like, thank you for your service, we support our troops, we are a grateful nation. Those words must, must be connected to actions. And veterans treatment courts are actions that we can all take that reflect our true values of gratitude towards the men and women who have given so much for us. And you know, 0 0.5 of the popul 0.5 percent of the population served in the armed forces. There are so many of us that have the opportunity to step in and say, we want to be there to support you on your journey home. Yeah. A lot of folks will look at most of us, Cheryl, and they say, well, wait a second. She went to an Ivy League school, University of Pennsylvania. She was an actress in Hollywood and was very successful. You've given up that career to do this full time for veterans, but you're not a veteran. Why are you the right person to be one of the leaders in this national movement? Well, I, th I think because only 0.5% serve, there are a large number of us who didn't serve. And the 0.5% and their families have carried the burden of our wars, our nation's wars, all of our wars on their shoulders. And I think it is appropriate, I think it is just, and I think it is an opportunity that I can't pass up to say that I want to do my part to support the men and women who have supported us. Our veterans fought for us, for our freedom. They said, I will go out there, I will, I will be willing to die for you. The least that we can all do is step up and say, when you come home, we will be there. And we will be there with programs that support you and programs that work for you and your families. And the other thing is, we need our veterans in our communities. Our veterans are of our greatest and most important civic assets. These are leaders and, and they are of service for life. We need them in our communities. So, you know, doing right by our veterans through veterans treatment course, does it help veterans and their families? Absolutely. Having them back in our communities helps our communities. We need them, we want them, and I am so happy that so many of our, our men and women are, are coming home and leading productive lives and being leaders in our communities, because we need them. Yeah. You know, Martin Sheen, as you know, is a huge champion of veterans courts. Yes. Um, what does he mean to you? How has he been a role model in your life? And Martin Sheen is, he's my lookup. <laughs> he is someone who really puts his heart and the things that he cares about and cares about social justice in action. He puts them in his feet. And he works tirelessly on behalf of so many people in this country and all over the world and is such a powerful voice. And someone who is an example, he's an example of someone who is able to use his time and talents to help others. And everybody can do that, every single one of us. And we don't have to be a famous actor like Martin. And, and um, every single person 
has gifts and talents that we can use to help make society stronger. And Martin is an example of someone who does that every single day. I mean, I look at his schedule, and it's he works so hard. And he, he came down here to be with us for our you know, Veterans Treatment Court Conference and, and to perform in, in a very special presentation that we're having, Theater of War. And he's going to be leaving immediately for the airport to go do a movie. I mean, he, he works it in because he cares. And he is definitely someone who I look to as an example of someone I hope to be more like someday. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I think I, I want to say about Veterans Treatment Courts is that they are community solutions. They're cropping up all over the country because people around the country are seeing more and more veterans coming through the court system and saying, we need to do right by them, and we can. You know that expression, when you know better, you do better? Well, we know better. We know what works, and Veterans Treatment Courts work. And now that we know better, we've got to do better. And we've got to make sure that, that we support them and we support them in communities all over this country. And I'm, I'm excited to be part of it. And it is a movement. Yeah. There are 22 veterans that commit suicide every day. A lot of folks say veteran treatment courts is a life or death initiative. Do you agree? I think veterans treatment courts are absolutely a life or death, death initiative. And I can't tell you how many veterans have said to me, that veterans treatment courts saved my life. Parents have said to me, veterans treatment courts are the reason that my son or daughter is alive today. And, you know, as we were talking about, arrest can be that point of intervention. And there's a young man that I, I met at one of the very first veterans treatment courts that I went to, and he said, I signed up to serve in Iraq, I came home. I had, I had no idea I had PTSD. He's like, I just knew I had high levels of anxiety. I couldn't be around people. If I heard a loud noise, I would jump. I couldn't be in a room without standing with my back against the wall. I had to take, drink 20 beers a night just to get in bed. He said, nights were hardest for me because my missions in Iraq were at night. So I drank 20 beers just to get into bed. I'd wake up in the middle of the night screaming. He said, my girlfriend left me. I lost my job. I, um, my parents kicked me out of their house. And he said, I one night walked into a bar and I woke up behind bars. And he said, and that was the best thing that ever happened to me because I didn't even know I needed treatment. And then he went to the court and he said, you know, this court saved my life. Not only did it provide me the structure that I liked and appreciated, he's like, I'm, I'm in the military, I like structure. And he said, and there was a judge who was strict and rigorous and tough on me, but he said he also believed in me. And he thanked me for my service. And he said, I'm proud of my service, and I want to be thanked for my service. And he said, and I knew that this judge believed in me, and I wanted to prove that I was worth believing in. And he went through the program, and I had the opportunity to be at his graduation. And he's married, he's a father, he's back in school, he has a job, and he said for sure, he wouldn't be alive today if not for a veterans treatment court.